<clears throat> I've got three important mental themes in my life. These define who I am today, what my interests are, where my focus is. You are here on this channel watching me because of our common interest, aquascaping, planted tanks and the aquarium hobby in general. But I've got two more things in my life that are equally important and define who I am as a human being. So the second theme of my life is value investing and financial independence. I spend considerable amount of time and energy studying the subject, reading a lot about it, doing the math, learning from the masters, studying companies, investing in stocks. The third one is mental health and psychology, psychological awareness. It has always been very, very important to me to know the motives, my motives, to acknowledge the feelings that drive me, to be aware of my mental processes. That helped me control my anxiety and my alcoholism. Being sober for almost six years now, yay. How did I do that? It was a book I read, written by the Hungarian-Canadian psychologist Gabor Mate. The title is In the Realm of Angry Ghosts. What a title. That helped me. It's about addiction. It's a great book, by the way. Read it, it's in English. So, psychology helped me to become more creative and to stay in the aquarium hobby. To enjoy this process of building or maintaining planted tanks for long, long years. Today, I'll talk about the psychology of aquariums. So, welcome to the beautiful world of aquarium psychology. Scientific research has proven that most people are not like me. I talk to hundreds, if not thousands of hobbyists on a regular basis, and my experience is backing up those scientific findings that I read about. So what is it that this particular scientific research came out with? Well, it says it's very likely, statistically, that you have never thought about why you really like aquascaping why you really like or dislike planted tank maintenance. I'm not talking about the superficial stuff here. I'm talking about the inner drive, your inner drive. If you stay with me through this video, please prove me wrong, because right now, I think this is not going to be one of the more popular videos. Why? because of how social media works, because people switch off when they don't see me say, welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping, and they don't see me build the next low-tech, no CO2, no filter, nano, beta tank, while mentioning that this could be your first planted tank on a low budget. And ideally, keep the whole thing under five minutes, skip the waffle, so that everybody can go on with their very important and very fast life, pursuing the next intense feeling, watching the next video of the next guy doing another freaking thing. People, this is maddening. I'm going to read a Peter Popper quote. If I was a devil and I got an assignment from an even bigger devil to destroy the world created by God, I would do exactly what people do today. I would hurry. I would speed things up. Evolution, experiences, information, happenings, emotional impact. As a gifted Satan, I would start spinning the world. And I would keep spinning it until the speed that it spins at would exceed the experience processing capability of the human mind, the capacity to carry emotional load until everything breaks down." End quote. 
Let's stop for a minute, okay? Let's just stop and think. Let's just think. Why? Why do we do what we do? Why do we enjoy this hobby? Is it because we've seen some guy on YouTube do cool aquariums and we want to own something similar? Sure, it could be the case. It is the case for many. I've read the comments. Yeah, this is how fashion works. This is herd mentality, people. This is how our society works, how trends are built, which is fine, because aquascaping is really cool. The end result, the very creative underwater world, it is alive, three-dimensional, very attractive, changes all the time, evolves. No doubt, our friends and family will enjoy what we created. But why did we do that? Is it because we crave for that feedback? What happens after we got it? Are we gonna get tired of it? Are we gonna dread the regular maintenances and this time that we waste on keeping it algae free? Is maintenance a wasted time? Or is it something that we can find very fulfilling? Let me tell you the story of the average very important company manager, a wealthy businessman who visits Green Aqua. Actually, this is not one particular case. I had a few similar discussions with rich and important people here. They go like, oh wow, this gallery is breathtaking. Congratulations, I really love how powerful the view is. I'd really like to have a planted tank like this. I'm sure it's a lot of maintenance and I don't have the time for it. I've got businesses, 60 people working for me. I've got two kids, two cars. I love sailing, I love traveling. And I always come home very late in the evening. Just go home, please. No, sorry, run home. And keep running through your whole freaking life without proper values, so when you get old, if you're lucky, you can regret that you didn't live enough with all that sailing, with all that money and very little time spent with your kids. By glancing over things and noticing only what is useful to you in the moment. Besides looking at this hobby from a quote, end quote, I have no time perspective, the second most frequent obstacle is boredom. You know the feeling, it's an entropy. A state of mind where your thoughts go nowhere. You don't feel motivated. You are without goals. You just let time pass by. And you feel miserable. You will not rescape the tank, don't feel like it, even though you are tired of your current arrangement, of all the maintenance sessions. This will be paired with frustration and despair caused by the algae that will inevitably appear in your planted tank. The hobby has lost many good people to these two obstacles, lack of time and boredom. So is there anything we can do about these two problems? There are three psychologists that shape the way I think of the human mind. By pure accident, all of them are Hungarians. It's by accident, really. I already quoted from my first role model, who was an author of many books, and professor of psychology. His name is Peter Popper, Peter Popper. And he actually was my teacher at the Hungarian Film University. He died 11 years ago. My two other idols have actually published their books in English. The second one, I already mentioned him at the beginning, is Gabor Mate, a Hungarian Canadian psychologist. The thoughts presented in this video are based on the life work of Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, my third idol. He was an American-Hungarian psychologist who came up with the concept of flow. His book, Flow, published in 2008, is still at the top 10 bestseller in Amazon's popular psychology creativity topics, so it's pretty popular. I'll list that book in the description. Those of you who follow this channel on a regular basis know that I've mentioned the concept of flow before in a couple of videos. I don't make any rules, Nick. I go with the flow.
on the third level, you can just sit down, relax, disconnect from the everyday problems, which we all have nowadays. And on the fourth level, you can just maintain a tank and get into the flow feeling, get lost in your thoughts, disconnect again from the everyday life. So I've, I've never known anything that would be so chilling, so nicely disconnecting as a planted tank maintenance or a planted tank setup action would be. I just found out this morning that Csikszentmihalyi died yesterday, age 87. So this video is now a tribute to his life work. So what is flow? By definition, a mental state in which a person performing some activity, like aquascaping, is fully immersed in a feeling of organized focus, full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity. It is characterized by the complete absorption in what one does and a resulting transformation in one's sense of time. I'm sure you've been there before. You know what this feeling is, right? Now let's see what we aquascapers can learn from this concept of flow. How can we recreate those conditions under which this hobby can become more fulfilling, more interesting, and something that gives us a better peace of mind and lots of positivity instead of negativity? Happiness. That feeling that you see on children engrossed in play. The feeling you see on my face when I get carried away in profound enjoyment while building a planted tank or talking about maintenance. What makes that possible? Turns out that according to the scientific research, I'm not that different from you in that regard, even if you come from a completely different culture than I do. Here are the principles of flow. According to Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, the eight major components that make an experience enjoyable. I will only reference examples from my own hobby, but all these components can be applied to almost any activity. Working on an assembly line, walking, playing the piano, working out, making love, driving, climbing rocks, performing surgery, and yes, aquascaping. Remember these eight points and apply them to your own aquascaping and your life will never be the same again, I promise. The hobby will become more fun, more enjoyable, and you will become more efficient in your aquarium maintenance. You're not going to hate it, you're going to love it. The key is to be conscious about what you do and why you do it. So here we go, the eight components of flow. One, have a clear goal. Know what you want to achieve. For example, I want to build a planted tank that gets into the top 500 at the IAPLC. Or, I want to do a scape that looks similar to what Bolash has built in one of his videos. Like this little valley with rocks on both sides and sands in the foreground, right? Another clear goal could be like, I want to finish my regular weekly aquarium maintenances in less than 20 minutes. It currently takes twice as much. It takes 40 minutes for me to do it. Don't forget, the goal needs to be clear. Not something like, I want to build a nice planted tank or I want to do regular quick maintenances. Focus on that goal throughout the whole process of building or maintaining the tank. Don't just decide on it in advance and then forget about it. Each and every piece of hardscape that you put into the tank while setting it up, each and every movement of your hand, sizing up the different aspects of rock, for example, 
should be conscious. The order in which you do the different series of steps during maintenance should also be conscious. Like with which hand you pick up the hose while you hold something else in your other hand. Oh, I don't suggest you hold that. <laughs> it's just an example for heaven's sake. <laughs> anyway, most people have general goals in aquascaping and only some vague ideas about how to reach that goal. And there are many ways of pursuing this hobby, which can be very confusing for a beginner. Confusion then works against your enthusiasm, right? Victor has told me a couple of times that he never thought a certain scape I did would become a good one when I started building it. He never foresaw the proper end result. I also got some comments such this under some setup videos. Thanks for commenting. Well, I always have a clear goal. I always act towards that clear goal. This is point number one. It helps me enjoy the process. About four hours have passed by since we started, I started doing this hardscape and I do believe that uh, I lost track of time. It's like one hour passed by and I just, you know, it's, it's a flow feeling. It's just, I'm just getting so immersed into what's happening here. It's getting late, the sun is going down. Number two, instant feedback. You will know exactly if something you do is taking you closer to your goal or not. You've got instantaneous feedback. Wow, that rock looks good there. Or nah, that pen is too big for that spot, etc. The clear feedback will help you focus on what you do. This focus is very fulfilling, very energizing. You'll know immediately if your build is going in a good direction and you'll also know when you commit a mistake at a certain step of the way. It will make you a better aquascaper. The more you do it, the more the instant feedback will teach you how to be better. This is what the uh, world famous Hong Kong aquascaper Dave Chow would call trial and error. Must be trial and error. So I have so many error at the front, at the before, so you must try yours. And then after that, you can have your solving methods. Number three, matching challenges and skills. You will only enjoy aquascaping if the challenges in the hobby are matched with your skills as, a, as an aquascaper. If my goal would be to build an IAPRC top 27 level planted tank, I would probably not enjoy the process as much as, say, Jason would, because that level is above my skills and capabilities, however experienced or knowledgeable I would be. So my idea is to go for something that I'll finish in a couple of hours while shooting a video, talking to you, which is a distraction, by the way, and not aim for something that is unachievable for me. I have to admit that I did not like those builds where the process stretched for more than seven, eight hours. I got tired. It was not a pleasant experience when I looked back on how I felt during the shooting. They just asked me whether I did this since this morning and I told them, yes, <laughs> we did this since last month. <laughs> Well, the tank was fine. I was perhaps proud of it, but the process itself did not give me so much pleasure and joy as one in which I could finish the escape in, say, four to five hours. On the other hand, if your goal is easily reachable for you, like building an Iwagumi for Tommy, he can do that blindfolded probably. So, if the task at hand is too easy, you'll probably get bored and distracted and you will not enjoy the process because it's a beaten path for you. There's no challenge, there's no fun. But don't be overwhelmed or stressed by trying to build something you're not ready for. Be in balance with what you're able to do, like financially too. All the people who really love aquascaping will tell you one thing, go smaller. 
If you don't have the budget, the smaller tank you build, the less money you will have to spend on it. Number four, focus your attention. Concentrate on what you do. In aquascaping, I often feel this single concentrated beam of attention towards the object of my creation, the scape itself. I'm not splitting my attention. I forget about people passing by, about the cameras rolling, about any other distractions. This is really refreshing. The feeling of harmony, of great ease, I'm being spontaneous. I so hate when Chubby or Aaron tell me, but I stop please, we need to change the batteries. The frustration is real. I lose focus. I don't want to stop doing whatever I do. I enjoy it so much. Number five, immersion. So you are in this state of complete flow. You are focused on building a scape or trimming a tank. The result? You forget about the everyday frustrations. When I was talking about flow previously, I mostly referred to this point as the summarized effect of pursuing the aquascaping hobby. You will disconnect from your everyday problems, your family life, your boss, your financials, COVID, whatever. If you were to worry about these everyday frustrations of your life, while you change the water, you would probably flood your living room or suck out the fish. I'm going to quote Csikszentmihalyi on this. That is a great feeling of relief. It's great to be operating in the present without worrying about the past, without worrying about the future, but being completely concentrated in what you're doing. In this sense, you might say that uh, flow is a form of escape. You're escaping from reality. But it's good to remember that, for example, Albert Einstein, the great physicist, used to say that art and science are the most effective forms of escape that people have developed. Aquascaping is both art and science for me. That's why I'm here. I love both art and science. I still can't decide whether I like doing some math in a green aqua spreadsheet more than aquascaping or making these videos, really. Then there's the problem of addiction which is an escape backwards. That's how psychology configurizes it. With aquascaping, you are creating a new reality. You're escaping forward. You learn skills you didn't have before. This escape is really cool. It's refreshing. Aquascaping moves you in a whole new experience where you are completely involved and focused. While you do something that can be later enjoyed by others too, so you're giving something to those that will observe your creation. How about that? How cool is that? Number six, you have control. In aquascaping, you are in control of your actions, of your experience, of your creativity, but not in complete control because that would be boring, right? Mother Nature has the final say. You're on an edge. You could ruin the scape if you don't pay attention or miss something. You could get algae if you forget to reset your timer or start the filter, whatever. Aquascaping is not rocket science. Almost anybody can master the knowledge required to build and maintain an algae-free, beautiful planted tank. You learn what it takes to do that. This sense of control is a great feeling. You don't have that in many areas of your life, right? This is the perfect hobby to be in control. Mother Nature has its own rules. If you know those and you play by them, you will be in control of your little underwater life and of what it takes to keep it healthy. Number seven, you lose the sense of self-consciousness. When I'm on camera here at Green Aqua, I don't really know who I am anymore. And I don't care. I just do what I'm set to do, be that a build or a maintenance or doing this very tutorial. I'm in a state of flow. I'm not worried right now what you think of me. 
if I'm too old or my English is not good enough, whatever you might dislike about me, I don't feel defensive. I'm not monitoring myself. You do. Anyway, when getting into the habit of escaping or aquarium maintenance, you will not worry about what others think. That will give you a great sense of relief, a sense of transcendence. Any one of you who had a flow feeling in any activity would know what I'm talking about. Aquascaping will give you a sense of transcendence. You'll go beyond the limits of your ego. We had a stand-up comedy here on our channel with our friend Reggie, and he actually joked about it. Check this out. It's like a midlife crisis gone way out of control. <laughs> like you spent enough money, you could have bought a real Ferrari, but, it, <laughs> but you're just trying to like justify a God complex that you want to see to come to like, no baby, like you don't understand. Yes, I spent $40,000 on an aquarium that's going to be in my room and you're not allowed to touch it. Now that is still the funniest video on the channel, but jokes aside, even Reggie had sensed this transcendence in our hobby. To put things in perspective for you, no, it's not a God complex. It's the transcendence of flow. You're becoming part of something bigger. You're getting yourself closer to Mother Nature. You bring her smallest creations into your space. You will be part of this energy that is flowing around you. You will feel better about yourself. You care about what you do. Number eight, the last positive effect of flow is that your sense of time will be transformed while building or maintaining an aquarium. I can't count how many times I lost track of time while building an aquascape here on this channel. Hours get condensed in what seem to be minutes. So you will be forgetting yourself in the process of building or maintaining a tank. But after you're done, yourself will return stronger than it had been before. This is one of the paradoxes of flow. By the way, this is somewhat similar to what people say about meditation. Challenges you take in aquascaping will take you to a higher and higher level. All IAPLC champions, Josh Sim included, have testified to that. We all start from the same level. The difference between the average Joe and Josh Sim is that he upped his challenges continuously and still does. It's a choice he made. He has clear goals, he knows and explores his variety of possibilities, and he's able to commit himself to weekly two or three water changes for years. How does he do that? He has a level of consciousness not many have. Don't believe me? Check out his masterclass video, one of the most popular videos on this channel. But watch it with another peace of mind. Don't only look at what he says, check out how conscious he is about the smallest details in what it is required to build a cool planted tank. He's not only smart, but a conscious thinker and one with a complex personality, a true role model for all of us. If you don't keep up taking new challenges by rescaping your tank to make a better layout or working on the efficiency of your maintenance, you will become bored quite quickly. You will have to develop new skills by watching our tutorial videos so you don't get frustrated by algae, for example. You might feel like you will never achieve a level of Josh Sim, or you might complain about money, that you will never afford the technology needed to support such a sophisticated system. Psychology calls this state psychic entropy. You are not asking questions like, how can I do that? Or how can I afford that? But you are now in a state of mind in which you are confused, conflicted, you feel helpless, you feel bad about yourself, and you will go in circles. This is not a state in which you can feel good. But by starting to ask questions, you will become active. For example, what can I do to achieve Josh Sims level? Or what can I do to bring down the maintenance time to 20 minutes? How can I save enough money? And how much time it will take for me to do that to afford the tank of my dreams? 
These questions will activate your conscious mind. It will take control over your feelings and you will find your own solutions to the problem. This is not theory, people. This is hardcore practicality. Been there, done that. Have you? Or are you just looking for an instant gratification or the pleasure of owning a beautiful planted tank? The problem with pleasure and relaxation, according to Csikszentmihalyi, is that they don't last for too long and they don't help us grow. You can eat as much as you want or have as much sex as you need, but you will stay exactly the same as you were before. Of course, you'll feel saturated, but that feeling will pass. And there you go again, you will inevitably seek the next pleasure to satisfy your needs. There's no growth in this circle, but there's a danger of getting addicted to it. We don't do aquascaping for pleasure. We observe planted tanks for pleasure, all right. Heck, we can even get addicted to watching planted tanks after a long day's work. But there's so much more to this hobby. Your reward is not what you get at the end. It's not the beautiful aquascape you created. The reward is the usage of your aquascaping skills in the pursuit of making a better planted tank. Yes, your scape will be really cool because you worked on it, putting your best efforts in it, and you will be proud of it. But what you take away from this is not the end result. It's the process that brings you these positive feelings. The flow you experience in aquascaping is the lasting feeling. It brings you a lot of joy to the everyday activities related to running a planted tank. And when you're done, you can sit back and relax watching the beautiful underwater world you created. And then you suddenly start thinking of what to do next about a certain part of that scape. You catch yourself feeling this great excitement towards your aquarium. And you are really looking forward to be able to work on it again. Because it brings you very positive and refreshing moments. You snap back into the flow without noticing. If you wish to fully experience aquascaping, Notice, this is a verb, a description of an action. You will want to pursue all the elements of flow. All right, let's do a recap. So number one, you set your bigger and smaller goals in this hobby. Number two, you stay aware, read the immediate feedback of your actions in setting up a tank or maintenance. Number three, stay within your circle of competence. Number four, concentrate. Number five, avoid distraction. Number six, feel the self-unconsciousness. Number seven, feel in control. And number eight, feel the disappearance of time. Out of these, the three most important are goals, awareness, use your skills realistically. And with these, you will have conscious enjoyment in your life and you will grow. You will be better aquascaper by each day. To get there though, you must be a master of your consciousness. Friends have told me on multiple occasions, Balaj, you're lucky. Your hobby is your job. How much more can you expect of life? My answer to that is this, I'm no different from you. If you live consciously, then you will experience flow in both your job and your hobby you will have a good life. Your days will be spent in a fulfilling way by doing things you enjoy. You will evolve. For me, personally, I just have it combined. Many of you who stayed with me until the last moments of this video will have both. Your jobs and aquascaping, bringing joy and satisfaction to your lives. Are you a complex personality? Do you use your mind control and override your feelings? Are you an aquascaper too? I'll see you next week. Bye.